There we go. Oh, come on. Got him. Okay, 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 sorry. Not a morning person. <laughs> so I used to have one of these rods. The, the rod I've used the last two years is the same exact blank, but it was a 48 incher. And there's not a lot of rod cases that actually hold a 48 inch rod. So I was having to carry my rod lot on the sled, which is a pain. Um, but it was also just a touch tip heavy. That's why I went four inches shorter. And uh, this is the first fish in the new rod and I'm loving it. Not to say, like I said, not to say I didn't like the other rod. It's, it's literally the same exact blank. It's just this one is four inches shorter off the butt. So your action in the rod is exactly the same. Oh, yeah. Not a bad one. Come on, honey. Maybe we should like start drilling double A. <laughs> well, well, I broke my auger yesterday, and last night I did order a new 10 inch auger. I just hooked him to the side of the face a little bit too. And it's a dark horse too. Yeah. Nice. Man, we should get a picture of that. Yeah, we should. Check that out. Beauty of a fish. He's actually got a little battle scar. Look at his dorsal there. It's actually... That's bone. I don't know what happened there. That's really interesting. Great fish to start my morning. Look at this, Sam. Oh, man. A little battle scar. Spawning might have been yeah, spawning could have been. These fish do spawn in the fall. If you guys never fish for lake trout, they spawn in the fall. Generally, what what water temp do they normally spawn at? Uh, low 40s. Low 40s? Kind of like Cisco's and Whitey's? Yeah. Same deal. Beauty of a fish. All right, buddy. Send me home. Get that, uh, maybe get that looked at by a doctor. <laughs> trout doctor down there. Good morning. I'm going to start with a half ounce tube jig. Little white and sir true, so the trailer hook. I've dropped this guy down. I've got my other two rods right here with me. Um, as far as baits, I've got rigged on those. I've got a one ounce hair jig here. And then I also have a number seven Swedish pimple. It's really nice to have the extra rods just to have these other baits right here ready to go if you're marking a fish and you can't really get them to go. Maybe they just want a different bait, a different presentation. But this rod really covers all of the main sizes of lake trout lures that you need to use. They're, they're really solid. I would say up to about an ounce, ounce and a quarter. And after that, um, I would suggest going to a glass rod. Thorn Rose makes a really nice glass rod, but the glass rods too are generally for a lot heavier fish. If you're hooking fish that are, for the most part, 20 pounds plus, I would suggest to go with that rod. For the lakes I'm fishing around here, generally our fish are between five and 10 pounds. We get some fish that are 15 plus. And that rod handles these fish absolutely great. But this Pro Graphite's really nice. It's really sensitive versus the glass rods, a little bit heavier and not quite as sensitive, but a lot more strong for the larger fish. Here we go. Got him. That one again, guys, came from the deep side. You can see how that mark came up through the false bottom. And right to the jig. Actually, that so looks like a good one. Well, I seen the hook set, and it. Yeah, it kind of just didn't. Yeah, rod didn't really move much. No. Man. I just. I don't know. I just I love this blank. It's it's stiff enough where you can handle any jig. That's up to, I'd, like I say, an ounce and a quarter, ounce and a half. Oh yeah, nice trout. Yeah. Um, but it's also kind of backbone. It's really parabolic for all these really massive head shakes and crazy stuff that trout do. It absorbs those head shakes really well, but it keeps tension on the fish. You got him? Yep. <clears throat> Look at the fins on this one. Check that one out, guys. 
That is a gorgeous trout. Solid, yeah, just stocky. Pretty fins. The white tips. Love that. Freaking crushed it. I set the hook and the rod just went <laughs> doubled. Hey, honey. Thanks for playing. You're pretty. See ya. See ya. I wouldn't mind knowing to know if anything's at least like wham up to it. <laughs> <laughs> right yesterday the joke was me and sam caught i don't know i think we had 10 or 11 trout yesterday and we had dead sticks out for 90 percent of the day and not a single one went off of the cisco so this morning i said screw it i'm just going to stick to the jigging rods i'm not going to mess with it unless sam gets bit on his and uh so far i think it's jig sticks five yeah. dead sticks are still dead here we go yeah, oh, come on. Oh, he's, he's coming back. Come on, where'd you go? Missed him. Oh, he's right there. Got him. Hit on the fall. Hit it on the freaking fall. Buddy, buddy, buddy. I missed him. He came back. Oh, it's a nice one. That was really cool. I missed him. He came screaming off bottom. And then he hit it on the fall. All of a sudden, my jig was just free falling. And all of a sudden, there was a ton of slack. They just swim out of yeah. it. Yeah. It's so nice. There he is. Nice, pretty trout. It's fun. Missed him. Came back, wanted some more. I'll take that. Thank you. But you'll see, now that I caught that last fish, my trailer hook's obviously really bent up, which is not a big deal. Just straighten that out. But what I want you guys to look at is the where my uh, knot is on the eye of my hook. You'll see, after fighting that fish, my knot's all the way here at the top. All right, what you want to do is take your line and pull it all the way back so your tube hangs more horizontal. Now when you get a little bit of water underneath this, it's going to sit almost perfectly horizontal, which is what you want. You don't want it hanging vertical, okay? Tubes are meant to be fished horizontally, but then if they don't want that, that's where I have my other rod here with a spoon, which is a true vertical bait, right? So sometimes they want the horizontal presentation, sometimes they want the vertical presentation. But it's good to have both rigged up with you, carrying them around. But like I say, if you catch a fish in a tube, you want to make sure you pull that line back over your hook so it sits nice and horizontal in the water, just like that. Looks really nice. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. On. Loose drag, but on. That one wasn't playing around. He knew what he wanted. What the? Look at that. Chartreuse and light sweet pink. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice, pretty one. Swim up. Yeah. Oh, he's trying. Oh, oh. Here. Uh, Ta da! Thank you, sir. There you go. Another beauty of a specimen. Doesn't matter how big they are, Lakers are so fun. Chased it, smoked it. Sam just had a one miss it twice. And uh, yeah, we went about 15 minutes without a bite and now we got a little school coming back through. Here we go. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> He hit it like five feet under the ice. Oh, yeah, there's my leader. <laughs> oh, my. Not and it's a real one. Yeah. Got out of the cookie cutters. So, a little math behind the science here. We uh, just switched spots again. This is where we were this morning. 
and you guys have heard me talk about it in other videos but we've got our major coming up at one o'clock it is right now 134 we've been here five minutes and we just hooked a big one hopefully we can get to i think it's a big one it, that run was uh yeah, it was a pretty good run pretty serious i think chased it from like 33 feet and hit it like six feet under the ice i was just about to open my bail and let him go back down oh yeah, yeah nice trout nice. you should have like double eights here yeah i don't know what were we thinking this morning oh he was almost there come on baby oh yeah oh yeah nice trout nice Phew. love that unhooked nice and easy no harm no foul you want a picker yeah that's a sweet fish. Right there, baby. Love it. Thank you for playing. Here you go. Come on, come on, come on. That one came up. Yeah, I got one going. Oh. Oh, I think he hit it. Yeah don't like when they do that so that fish there if you guys look at the graph you can see um, my depth is reading 46 feet of water and if you look about where I'm jigging I'm probably somewhere on the 32 mark and if I drop down to where that green starts right there that's probably about 35 feet okay and it might look like you know maybe a school of bait fish or something maybe a tree that's laying down there but in reality what it is is I've got my transducer set for a 15 degree cone angle so off the bottom of my transducer, it shoots out a beam that's 15 degrees wide. Okay, there's also an option for 21 on a Helix 7 if you would like when you're fishing really shallow water. But in deep water like this, I run a 15 degree cone angle. So that fish you actually saw come from the very, very bottom, the red, down in here. Okay, that fish came up from here and it came all the way through all that green stuff. So what that's telling me is when this cone is shooting down, that green on the top is a false bottom. You know? It's, it's saying it's really that shallow, but what's, what's happening is the 15 degree angle is actually hitting rocks that are like under my feet. And the deep side is more where my graph is on that side. So it reads what would be bottom, but it's really not. And the transducer is kind of confused because the steep here is so sharp that your one side of your transducer is hitting here and the other side of your 15 degree angle is hitting down here. So that fish I could tell was actually out in deeper water because it came up from the deep side of my transducer and chased my bait up this way. So I might know that, okay, maybe I need to drill a hole a little bit deeper behind me or behind the graph, I should say, because that's where that last fish came from. So if you pay attention to the small stuff like that, you can figure out where these fish are traveling back and forth. And as long as you don't mess up and uh, have your roller guide froze, you should be able to catch that fish. And I just royally messed it up. Here we go. Yes. Dry spell is over. Mind me. It's been uh it's been a rough last few hours. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Down to 180 feet he goes. So yeah, no, it's been uh pretty dead. We had, I got that one on the major and since then we marked a couple fish, but they've all been really lazy, like not even worth showing you guys, like hardly even do anything. And we're on the last spot of the night. We got, I don't know, 20 minutes left and all I wanted was one more. It's always one more, right? Might be the better one of the day. I hope so. I loosened I up, like I, I, lo I loosened up my drag a little bit because it was kind of tight, but I don't care. I'll play with them a little longer. <laughs> Should have drilled two. <laughs> Should have did. Oh, here's leader. Eight feet to go. Oh, saw a little color. Some bubbles. One rolling, one wrapping. Oh, yeah. This oh. truck is angry. Just angry. Nice. Beauty. I honestly didn't think this one was going to do it. Missed one? Sam just missed one. We've been seeing this today. They've been coming in in schools. Like, we'll have little waves of action back and forth. This guy could have drug home. There we go. Dip him quick. And there you go, guys. Awesome, awesome day in the water. So much fun. I hope you guys learned a little something about trout rods. If you guys are in the market, 
highly, highly suggest the Pro Graphite from Thorn Brothers. Anything from a 42 to a 48 inch rod, whatever you would like, you can customize everything and anything on it to fit your needs. So check out the website. I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you guys are not already, please subscribe to the channel. It's good for everybody, good for me. And we're gonna do this guy a favor and get him back.